I just want to tell you about today. It was really cool. I met Starsky, Operator Starsky. Starsky and I have a mutual friend, Max. I worked with him in Donbass. He has a channel called Flashback on YouTube, and I met him through Dimitri. A lot of people will be familiar with him who follow my Instagram stories. And this morning at 8 a.m., I met Starsky, and we probably spent the next four to five hours together. I just went to meet him with no expectations. I asked him in a message, would you help me grow my platform? So we met this morning in Hostomo. I got to admit, he's a really cool guy. We're the same age. We both served in Donbass. He was there in the old war. His unit was involved a lot with uh, Svetlodarsk, Novolagonsk. That's uh, southeast of Bakhmut. Uh, I've operated there as well. We're actually going to meet up again and have a mandate on Friday. We're going to go to a sushi place before I leave again on Saturday. Uh, talked a lot about my injuries. So just for anybody that doesn't know about this, because some people don't follow me on Instagram and are relatively new. Oh my God, my God. On August 6th, drove into the minefield. That's kind of what brought me to Starsky today. If the best thing I ever did with my life was to come to Ukraine, and the best thing that ever happened to me was to get blown up, well, how does that work? I was scared, but I went and did my job because I believed in my job. Just one day after so many didn't go my way. Nobody doubted my intentions after that certain privileges and authorities I might have now. Anything I ever ask for, I get. I'm really lucky that way. And with Ukrainians I know in Donbass, from 93rd Brigade to National Guard, yeah, he got wounded, you know, and he was in hospital. He, he got hurt in Solodar, but he's back. And it's, it's kind of like I get this respect. So it opens a lot of doors. The medication is working really well for the Crohn's. Uh, I'm feeling probably about 85% again. Me and Nika are going back. Now she's not gonna stay forever. I've only got her till 1st of December. She has to go work on a qualification. A really cool thing that's happened, Starsky's gonna help me build my platform. A lot of you people watch this now from Jake Bro that suggested it, uh, which I'm extremely grateful for. After Jake Bro mentioned that video, within one day we received about $5,000 in donations. Now that's only been a week now, and I've probably received $8,000 more than I would have otherwise. I'd just like to show you what I do with that money. I now have a Ukrainian bank account. I'm gonna switch the PayPal from Sweden directly to Ukraine. But what's really cool, what you can do with the Ukrainian bank account, which I could never do before, I can make instant purchases. They do this thing called card to card transfer whether we're buying tires, generators. What if another volunteer needs help? This is what the money's for, right? It's not mine. So let me show you. This is Olya Zaitseva. I sent her a card-to-card -card transfer of 10,000 grivna. She just fundraised for a new Hilux. That'll pay for three tanks of diesel. She does evacuations like the rest of us, and she has just as many contacts as Philip, but she's not as crazy. Here's Dimitri. A lot of you will know him from my Instagram stories or some of the viral videos we did when I started evacuations. I sent him 20,000 grivna. Dimitri works as an IT guy at night on an American salary, but he spends that all on the Ukrainian army. Sometimes he needs money for himself. I wish he would take care. My goal was always to buy generators for the army, for medical, uh, requires diesel. But recently, I bought two benzene petrol generators. One of them I gave to Seabear's council. You'll see here. Oleksy is the civil administrator for Seabear's. That's like wartime mayor. We gave him one generator, but now we're able to fundraise for more. He has a ration of 120 litres of petrol a week for the citizens. After today's purchase, and by next week, by Monday, he'll have four generators. <laughs> okay, so we got two UFO heaters, one will go to see this stab punt, one for me and Dimitri. Four BF Goodrich for Panda and Elf's Kazavak. Got three benzene generators for Seaver's Council, that makes four total, and a shitload of tow ropes. So that was our trip to Epicenter today. 
Google Maps isn't really up to date in Ukraine. The first epicenter we showed up to doesn't exist. Where's the nearest epicenter? Pop it into Google Maps. Yeah, that's epicenter. Never been to Bucha before. Totally. This is Harley. He's a British volunteer who's been bringing supplies to Ukraine since 2019. Today I sent him £500 for diesel. I just purchased four Motorola radios for £1,872. Harley's going to bring them over with a lot of supplies for people like Swampy that you might know from Instagram. In an effort to sum up more medical supplies, um, I'm often fortunate to receive donations from volunteers and NGOs here in Ukraine. It's become a little bit more difficult. So this morning I thought I'd contact Swampy. Hello mate, looking for TAC Med Farm clinical supplies in country. In Kiev, going to Kramatorsk on Saturday. Seems the supplies and pickings are getting fewer than months past. Any suggestions or contacts in Kiev? I don't know, I'm afraid. I only have tiny amounts coming in as well. Everything seems to be drying up. <laughs> I've just started my OnlyFans. Soon there'll be enough funding for all of us, mate. Haha, <laughs> I doubt that. Swampy's working now on the Kherson front. I work in Donbass. I also contacted Rugi. He's training people in Kharkiv. We're all struggling to get medical supplies. And we're all quite crafty and have connections of our own, which really makes me worry for my own front around Bakhmut, because if I can't get it, what's the situation like in the army? People have contacted me. Brett from Canada has been very helpful, offer me something I'll collect tomorrow. And a complete stranger, a Ukrainian volunteer. He stays behind and his wife and children are in Luxembourg. And through her, She's helping get supplies in and he's distributing them. And she didn't know me. And she said, well, I don't know if I want to supply you. I sent her the newspaper articles of me getting blown up and that I'm in hospitalers. Okay, we can trust you. So there's always a way and we're always going to find a way. Less worry and the more faith I just have and let it happen, it somehow works. Just like how this works. Last week, I was able to purchase a 6,500 euro 13 kilowatt generator that has been sent from Germany, from Enrico to Poland, where hospitalers will collect it and bring it to Kiev, and that will now power our massive storage container system we have. Not to mention the 15 7 kilowatt diesel generators we purchased months ago. The final 10 were delivered in Kiev. Now, two of them sit at Hospitaler Base one powering the main training building and one for the accommodation. Some days I worry about how are we going to keep doing this? Is it even possible? Maybe my biggest asset here is my age. I'm not old, but I'm not young either. And experience tells me, just focus on the input and the outcome will take care of itself. This isn't a financial report like I did in earlier months. You can look back on that video, but I will do one sometime after Christmas again. But I just want to let you know where we're at, and I want to say thank you. Now, with Starsky's help, who knows how far we can go. Thanks, guys.